Hey everybody, I'm Sigari. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to take your pulverizer and your redstone furnace and customize them so that you can pick exactly what you want out of the pulverizer when you want it out of the pulverizer without having to go through the furnace. So a lot of the time what you know people set up really early game is they'll usually get their uh, They'll get their pulverizer and their redstone furnace, and they'll usually have it in some configuration, maybe like this. And they'll throw a chest, like, right here. And then they'll throw another chest over here. That's how you used to be able to do it. And it was really simple. You put stuff in the chest, or maybe you just put stuff in the pulverizer, you forget about that chest completely. And then the pulverizer would be hooked up to the redstone furnace, which would smelt all the stuff that comes out of the pulverizer, and then it would throw it in this chest. And everything that you have from that pulverizer into the redstone furnace would go into the chest. And that's kind of annoying because you didn't always want all that stuff to go into the furnace. Sometimes you wanted it just to be pulverized and that was that. So what you'd wind up doing is you'd be in your furnace trying to shift click really fast to get the stuff out before it disappeared into the abyss of being processed, which they've recently fixed. Well, today I'm here to show you guys a really fancy setup that's super simple and only takes a little bit of redstone and some item ducts to put together. So what we've got here... We've got a chest that leads into an item duct, that leads into a pulverizer, that leads into another item duct, and then it goes into a distribution chest. Now, what's cool about this chest right here, this chest actually determines what happens next because of this lever. And this lever will say either go to the output chest and be done, or go to the redstone furnace and process, and then go into the chest. So if you watch right here, I switch that. And you can see the little lights turning on and off down there at the bottom right here. So, how does this all work, you're wondering? Well, first, let's show you how it works. So, we go back here. And what we've got right here is we've got this lever. Okay. And the lever hooks up to what's called a redstone torch. Now, because the redstone torch is here, this is actually an inverse signal. Okay. If I took the redstone torch and I put the redstone torch on, on the pad, it wouldn't work. So I just want to demonstrate just so you see that you need to remember this is really important where you put it. Okay? If I put it there and then I try flipping the switch, nothing happens. Okay? So you need to be really careful to put it on the connected line. Okay? There we go. Now, once you've got your inverse signal, on is off and off is on. Okay? This will go down here and then it will be right here where it makes contact with most importantly this item duct. Okay, and this item duct has a servo in it that says, whoops, sorry, that says when the redstone is on a low signal, or on, off, sorry, this will turn on. Okay, if I put it on a high signal, it would have to be on for it to go on. But we don't want that. We want it on a low signal, because we want it to just flow right on by when this isn't lit up. Okay, so let's show some examples of why this would be useful. So first, We'll start with our friend cobblestone. Everybody loves cobblestone. It's it's like everywhere. Okay, so let's say that we're gonna take our cobble, and you need to get some glass because while cobble is great, being able to see outside of your house is probably pretty cool too. So we want some glass. So first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what makes cobble into glass. Chest, pulverizer. Pulverizer turns it into sand. Then you need to smelt it into glass. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this lever to on. Okay, and then we're going to throw 16 cobble in there. Now, you see the cobble goes in there all happily, and then the pulverizer is going to start working on it, and it's going to throw out sand. The sand goes into the chest, where it sits there for a second, and then the sand goes up into the, the redstone furnace, where it processes. And then it turns into sand, or I'm sorry, it turns into glass, and you can see the glass just happily going through on there. Okay? Now let's say that you've got enough glass. Oh man, too, I only needed a couple of windows. Let's turn that off. The next time, you can see the gravel goes in there, and then there goes the sand. Now, what's interesting to note is you saw that gravel go through there. Oh ho ho ho! But why didn't the gravel jam up the redstone furnace? I'm really glad you asked. Let's check out why. So first of all, what we'll do is we'll pull that out of there and we'll grab some gravel. Okay, let's take that piece of gravel. Now, What's neat about these item ducts, the person that made this really thought this stuff ahead. I think this is fantastic. You've got your chest here, okay? Let's say that during processing, your pulverizer made some gravel. Your gravel will be right here because it's a byproduct. All right, the gravel will go into the item duct and it would go here. 
Now, if you were trying to smelt your cobble into glass, the gravel would just sit in there. Okay, now, it should be going through the pipe, right? Because this pipe is red. It means go. Go, 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 go. This pipe is not red. But it's just sitting there. Why is it just sitting there? I will show you. Because if you try and put gravel in a redstone furnace, you can't even do it. I'm like shift clicking. Whereas if I try to put, you know, cobble in the redstone furnace, it'll work. See? If you cannot shift click the item into the box, it won't even try. So what you wind up having is you've got your gravel sitting there, and then you come by and the next time you're like, oh, you know what? I don't need to smelt. You just right click, boom, there's your gravel. Happily ejected for you. And something even cool is when you're finished with the run, you can just toggle the switch really quick and it'll spit all that stuff out of there. Okay, so let's get into some of the specifics about why this would be so great. Other than cobble, there's other reasons too. You usually have your pulverizer and your redstone furnace because you're trying to double your ingots really early game, right? Maybe you're not using Tinker's Construct or another mod. Well, let's say that you've got ferrous ore, for example, okay? We all know that ferrous ore is used to make invar. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this from smelt to not smelt, and we're going to throw in that ferrous. Okay, the ferrous is going to go on in there, and then it's going to start pulverizing into that ferrous dust that you know that you can make into invar blend. Okay, so it, it pulverizes, and then out comes your little tiny bits. Now, Ferrisaur has a very small chance to produce a byproduct, and when it does that, because you're not telling it to smelt, it will also travel down the item duct with it. Now, let's say that just in case you wanted to make Ferris ingots, I don't even know what they're used for, you can decide to flip this on, and then halfway through the cycle, it will say, okay, we'll go smelt. And you see that you're two, because you did your ore doubling. They go in in a pair. And then out come your shiny ferrous ingots. Yay! That's fantastic. Okay, what else can this be used for? Well, I'll tell you. Let's turn this off, and let's go to our obsidian. Obsidian is something that used to always jam up my system. Oh my gosh, obsidian, why do you do this? So, for those of you that have crushed your obsidian before, you know that obsidian doesn't turn into one, doesn't turn into two, but turns into four obsidian dust. So, yeah, it's ridiculous. And those would fill up so fast. Ratio of four to one. You put 16 obsidian into your pulverizer and you've got to come babysit it for a while. But now, there's that shiny metal, that byproduct of the fairs. But now, you've got your pulverized obsidian here. I could literally throw all of this stuff in here and just set it and forget it. And I can wait while it gets queued up. Right here, you can see that it's queued up. There's some cobblestone stuff in there. And then you can see over here that there's some queued items ready to go. So you can throw all this stuff in here. You can just walk away. And the best part about it is, is that if you need to and you check on something, you're like, oh, you know what? I need to smelt. You can just switch that to smelt. It's super simple. Now, note that obsidian can't actually, pulverized obsidian can't actually smell anything, so you're just going to clear that out of there and it'll go on down. Uh, if you had this reversed, you could actually be backlogging your obsidian into here because you were actually smelting your iron ingots for your iron dust, for example. And then the obsidian will just wait until you flush it out. Okay? So, let's just take a look at this one more time. You've got your lever right here. You flip that lever, and that plays with the the little redstone light on the other side you can see okay that leads to a very simple redstone trail which leads to another redstone inverse torch this is an inverse torch because it's hanging onto a redstone signal okay and then this right here and this right here turn switch now it's important to know where are the servos in this because your handy pneumatic servo actually tells the system what to take in all by itself and what to you know kind of ignore so let's analyze the servos here. The servo on the chest into the pulverizer has a servo that is set to ignore. That means that no matter what you put in here, anytime you put something in here, it will try and put it into the pulverizer. Okay, this has a servo too. This is saying, please move the stuff out of the pulverizer right into the chest as soon as you can. This does not have a servo. The reason for that is because you want to be able to control it with the lever. Okay, this has a servo. This servo is set to low. What low means is 
when that's not shining, this is shining because that was on a low signal. When it's turned on and this is bright, this will shut off. This does not have a servo, and this actually doesn't need to have a servo. It's actually really convenient the way that I set this all up, that it makes a nice line that shows you exactly where your stuff is going through the pipe. Okay? I hope you guys, uh, if you have any questions, just post a comment on my YouTube page. Be sure to uh, subscribe if you like what you see here. I'll have more videos in the future. I'm Sigari. I hope that you guys enjoyed my pulverizer and redstone furnace demonstration. Have a great day.